Hello YouTube and welcome back to World of Warships with Wadrace again. And today I am going to be running a battle for you in the Tier 7 Premium Pan American Cruiser, the new Avid Julio. Now, anybody who's been playing World of Warships for long enough, especially uh, ever since the US Light Cruiser update, they will recognize this as basically just being a reskinned and, uh, I guess, renamed USS Helena. I mean, she's got the same 152mm guns as the Helena, she's got the same turret arrangement as the Helena. For all intents and purposes, it's the Helena. Well, when you actually look at the ship description, it is a Bro Brooklyn-class light cruiser, same as the Helena. So, it is effectively exactly the Helena. There are some minor variations, but really not many to uh, talk about overall. Um, just kind of... She does have that counter-rotating number three turret, as opposed to the uh, forward-facing number one, number two turret of the Helena as well. So she s still has all of the firepower that the Helena had. She still has everything that makes the Helena good. And that starts with her health pool of 3,330 hit points, which is a very fair number to say the least. Of course, as already mentioned, she has the five triple 152mm cannons, which have a 10 second reload as opposed to the Helena's seven or so, with an 18 second 180 degree rotation time. 127 meters of dispersion at range, 2200 maximum HE shell damage, 12% chance of fire on target, and her maximum firing range is 13.6 kilometers, and her AP shells also do 3200 maximum damage. For her AA defense, she is still basically an American cruiser, so all of the AA is still very, very strong, definitely something worth specking her for over time and just all around very, very fair. For her maneuverability, she has a maximum speed of 30 knots with a turning circle radius of 690 meters and a rudder shift of 7.3 seconds. And for her concealment, she is seen from the surface at 11 and a half kilometers, from the air by 7.6 kilometers, and after firing her main battery in smoke, she is seen at 5.6 kilometers. Regarding upgrades modules, I do have her set out with Steering Gears Mod 2, AA Guns Mod 2, Propulsion Mod 1, and Main Armaments Mod 1, which are all very, very good and strong bonuses for this ship. The commander, given that this is the 10-point commander I got with her, she has preventative maintenance, adrenaline rush, basic firing training, and advanced firing training. And that's just the start of a reasonably strong build for her. And of course, I did get this ship very recently by way of the uh, current Christmas Crates event. I have done some gift swapping with some of my, a couple of my clan mates now, and this was the reward that I got for one of those gift swaps. I will thank uh, Hooli Chicken for that very, very much. Definitely a very nice little uh, care package. The flip side is that the other ship that I got from that same care package was the Krasny Krim, which, as anybody will know, is the worst possible uh, ship in-game. But anyway, that's beside the point, not talking about her too much. Uh, I did backtrack a little bit just to talk about the Helena and show that, yeah, it was the eight and a half second reload, but pretty much otherwise standard uh, range numbers and whatnot across the board. There are some minor differences again, but still basically just the exact same ship. I mean, even the uh, commander skills are pretty much uh, the same across the board. The only difference in my Helena being that I do have a 12-pointer on her instead of a 10. But that's not saying much. The only real thing that changed was the 
choice for expert marksmen as well as adrenaline rush, but the Nueve de Julio does have some reasonably quick rot rotating guns, so I opted for the adrenaline rush as the first choice instead. Anyway, moving on into the battle now. Now, one thing that I will uh, make a quick point of is some of you who have been watching my channel a little bit by this point will know that anytime I get a new ship or new premium or whatever, I tend to do a review or just a, kind of a first video on her within like the first two or three matches of uh, actually getting the ship. And this regards tech tree ships, um, premium ships, it doesn't really seem to, it doesn't really matter too much. And part of my reasoning for that is I actually tend to get very, very comfortable with a ship's performance within about a match or two. There are very rare occasions where it'll take me a little bit to really start understanding what I have to do with the ship, but overall, I do get comfortable with the ship's performance parameters reasonably quick. And when you're talking about a ship like the Nueva de Julio, because it is already a cut and paste of a ship that is already in-game, all I have to do is kind of remember how I played the sister, I guess you could say, and it's within a match that I get my feel for her. In this case, this was the first match that I actually pulled the Nueva de Julio out into battle. Now, it's not a stellar match, but at the same time, I did everything in this match exactly the same way I would have done if I were playing in the Helena. There were a couple of very minor issues, but I worked them out. And most of it actually has to do more with her reload time than anything else in that it's slightly faster, but that extra two seconds, I honestly have to say, I don't feel that when I'm in a decent enough ship. As long as I maneuver, as long as I take advantage of my positioning or whatever, it's actually not as big a deal to have a couple of seconds difference in my reload time so long as I'm smart about my shot selection and my shot placement. And, well, her performance in all other regards is exactly the same as the Helena, so all I had to do was make sure that I was keeping myself in reasonably good concealment and just take advantage of ships that gave me just a little bit too much of an opening. Now, while I was waiting for my... Uh, evil twin to come around the corner of the island, I did try to take a quick couple of pops at the uh, enemy gallant over the island, and of course the Otago is coming around the corner as well, but it's actually going to start maneuvering away, but also by the time I actually have a line on the Otago, the enemy Nueva de Julio is also going to be giving me a uh, much closer target to work with. So overall, and again, these guns turn around nice and quick. Not insanely quick, mind you, but they're quick enough where before the enemy Nueva de Julio has completely passed, I am able to get off all of my guns for at least one shot. And I do score some very reasonable damage. I am, of course, going to finish off the enemy Nueva de Julio, but it is going to take me a small bit of uh, work to finish her off. I do try to take out one of the uh, rear turrets with AP shells, but that doesn't really work out for me. But it's also starting to turn in, gives me a little bit more broadside, and I can just drill the citadel from that point on. And yeah, no more enemy NDJ. <clears throat> now, there were a couple of things that I could have done very differently at this point in the match. First off, I probably should have just turned and gone to the north, then I would have had a little bit more damage potential, I suppose, on the uh, enemy battleship, and I probably would have gotten to a uh, 
decent point for firing on the enemy uh, on the enemy disper detachment that is off to the channel in the on the east end of the map. However, I didn't start off in that direction. In fact, it was only right about now that I say maybe I should go to the north and see if there's something that I can do off over there or even spot the CV or whatever. So, yeah, I, I could have made a couple of decision choices, but overall, the the ship, I would not have done really any differently if I were playing in the Helena again. It's just that very similar playstyle. Now, I really don't see an incredible amount of action for uh, the next little while on this match, just because the enemy is so far over to the east, and even if I were to get a, uh, I guess, a firing line, they're still out of range, because these do, these guns aren't bad, but they still only have, uh, what is it, 13 kilometer range, I said? So before I can even do anything, I've got to get the guns in range. I actually have substantially better chances of getting in range of the uh, CV than I do of either of the enemy ships to the south. Now, while I'm sure the other enemy, the other friendly cruisers to the south would have very much enjoyed having my support had I gone to the south instead of to the north, they do ultimately handle the enemy Queen Elizabeth and the enemy York well enough where I don't really regret having gone to the north in the first place. And I do ultimately spot out and finish off the enemy aircraft carrier as well, so there is that to say. I wasn't entirely worthless. I didn't just sink the enemy Nueva de Julio and that was my sole contribution to the battle. And that is one of the other things that I do kind of briefly want to mention, is that regardless of the ship I'm playing, and this is one of the other reasons why I like to post new ship videos so so quickly, is because, one, as I mentioned, I do tend to get used to newer ships very quickly because I've been playing the game often enough that I just start compensating for variations in the ballistics relatively quickly but also because I actually find it very rare that I have a ineffectual match. I just excel at making sure my aim is on point, and as long as I know the armor profile of my ship, I generally tend to keep the armor positioned well enough where even if I'm getting focused down, I can mitigate enough of the damage to still do at least some decent damage before I am absolutely obliterated. Now, here, I have finally caught up and spotted out the uh, Independence. Actually, it's the Gallant that's spotting the Independence, but his fire is uh, remarkably ineffective. And while it's heading away from me, I know that it's going to be outside of my gun range. So I just kind of keep biding my time a little bit and hold my fire until I know that I'm at least going to land some hits. And once I know I have a decent line, of a decent firing arc, I take the shot. And when you consider that there are 15 shells in the air, and three hit, I mean, that couldn't have been, that, that could have been a better hit, but it wasn't bad. But af once I've confirmed that my aim is decent, my number of hits really only start getting better, even as I start closing, especially as I start closing range, because then dispersion is less of a factor, and yeah. Three hits, two hits, now I'm getting six hits, I think this next hit is, yeah, 10. So I, again, my aim, just on a regular basis, is usually very, very much on point. As long as I am familiar enough with the ballistics properties of the guns, where I'm looking, what I'm doing, 
I can have very effective fire on target very, very quickly. And that's just the way I seem to work in the game. I have this inherent knack for putting shells where I want them. Anyway, with the match over, going over into the actual battle results, I earned 197,558 credits for the match, 3,040 experience points, and 2,049 free experience points for 53,663 damage done, 98 main battery hits, 1 confirmed kill, 4 citadels. Um, I did actually land a couple of secondary battery hits, which that's one bonus over the Helena, is that this... The Nueva de Julio does have a couple of extra secondary batteries, I believe. But even so, I still only scored about middle of the pack with 380 base experience points earned. Just 40 shy of the top liner. But, I mean, definitely not bad, and the Otago worked for that, so I don't mind that too much. Even the Gallant put in quite a bit of effort with the uh, enemy battleship and helping out with the CV. Uh, 35,165 damage done to the enemy Nueva de Julio, so I definitely did some very, very strong damage there, and it even got in a heal, so I was able to farm a little bit more damage off of her. And overall, most, as you can see, the majority of my damage was done with the main battery. Only about 3,000 was done via fires. Of course, no torpedoes, no, so no floods, but that is what it is. And of course, net results, because I am running a bunch of modifiers, I have 128,613 credits earned net for the match, and my commander earns 6,250 free, sorry, 6,250 experience points for his uh, advancement. And again, just... These numbers were only possible because of the Christmas crates. I do have a number of the uh, Scylla and other phenomenally good economic flags to uh, take advantage of for now, and I'm definitely using them to uh, great effect. <coughs> anyway, on that note, I suppose I shall let everybody go. I hope you have a enjoyable day. Happy hunting! Take care, please do not forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you all again next time.